Next, we'd like to ask Steve Klein, PG&E's Chief Sustainability Officer, to join us. He'll be speaking about PG&E's sustainability journey and our plans to become the leading utility in, in the environmental arena by 2014. We especially appreciate Steve for joining us today, all the way from DC. Steve? Thank you. Thank you. Really delighted to be here. And before I start, let me just um, second Des's comment about leadership. And let me congratulate Des and Yanni and the entire supply chain um, leadership because I think this project is really, um, it's, it's great, it's astonishing, and I think it's going to get a lot of great press. Um, and more significantly, it's going to help us um, greatly manage our carbon footprint. Um, it's, it's very easy to think about, we currently have a really good understanding of, of the operational footprint of the company. We don't have a great understanding of the impacts, uh, environmental or carbon, of the, of the upstream uh, work that uh, you all do. Um, we have a reasonably good sense of what occurs downstream on the part of our customers in terms of raw emissions data and by customer class, but we're working hard to better understand that. So the last frontier and the really big frontier is the work that you all are undertaking and, and commencing today. Um, and it's really critical because if we don't do it and do it right, we risk moving emissions on the board without reducing them net. And that means that one, we're not going to get to the low carbon economy that we need to get to. And two, we're just going to move costs around in ways that are, are going to be really suboptimal. So it's, it's a really big deal, and I'm very excited to hear more about it. What I thought I'd do today is, is just talk a little bit about our sustainability efforts and, uh, and how we're thinking about those in kind of a broader context, and specifically how what you all do fits into that. As you know, sustainability isn't a term that's uniformly defined. And as, as we think about our sustainability commitment, it's really rooted in the company's vision and values. Um, the four overarching goals of, of delighting customers, energizing employees, rewarding shareholders, and environmental leadership really are the threads that make up sustainability. And as we think about the triple bottom line that many people think of when they talk about sustainability, um, people, profit, planet, it captures all of those in, I think, a really nice way. Um, moving forward, we're really looking to embed this notion of sustainability into every aspect of the business. For the first time, as you know, we've set very specific goals on all of these dimensions as part of our effort to become the leading utility. Um, so not only have we said we're going to be the leading utility by 2014, but we've broken down goals for each one of those components and, and created metrics for each one. And our, our vision is really premised on achieving all of those. For example, if you think about our footprint, the company's operational footprint, um, some of the things that Des talked about are, are critical elements of that. Um, in addition to reducing the environmental footprint of our buildings, of our supply yards, of all the elements of our business, um, by doing that, we reduce the costs related to those components. We also reduce the emissions and the broader um, CO2 footprint. And frankly, after hearing more about today's project, looking forward, we may well want to be in a position where we start to think about a supply chain metric um, some years into the future as we start to then operationalize the good work of this project. So what's the business case for sustainability? If you think about it, there's a whole set of really hard and soft elements that constitute a business case. I mean, starting out, and it seems like a soft one, but it's a critical one, it increasingly is expected by all of the, the major um, NGOs and others that we deal with. It's, it's something that gets us in the door of working with them. It's, it's not a nice-to-do sort of thing. It's, it's a critical-to-do sort of thing, and it's a critical sort of thing to do well. So it's, it gets us a seat at the table. Um, in addition, it builds relationships that 
ultimately help us do what we do better and do it more effectively. Um, but as Des mentioned, um, there's another critical dimension to it, and that is fundamentally, in a very hard way, it reduces costs. And by pulling costs out of the system, by reducing our footprint, we make our products more affordable. Maybe if, if we do it right, we get a little bump to the bottom line. Um, all of those are, are great things, and they are critical to making sustainability sustainable over time. This needs to be something that uh, ultimately becomes second nature to us, and we just, as part of our everyday work, incorporate it into what we're doing. Um, we like to think about this really long sweep of a sustainability journey at PG&E, but it's really focused on a couple of um, themes. One is strong policies. If you think about our environmental policy, our environmental justice policy, and our climate change policy, all of them are very clear, very strong, and I think um, have, have allowed us to implement them in a, in a very helpful way. Second, transparency and reporting. Um, We've been transparent about CO2 emissions. We were the first utility um, to uh, open up our emissions um, to the California Climate Action Registry and to disclose them uh, in our, at the time, environment, em environmental annual reports. Uh, in fact, we were probably the first utility in the country to do an environmental annual report, where at that point we, re we released all of the emissions of uh, source pollutants um, on our system for the year. And at the time, that was a really unique thing. Um, each step of the way, we've enhanced our reporting and our transparency and continue to do that today. 